I'm Jorge Sacaro. I'm a software engineer and uh, I focus on digital currencies and monetary economics. So a few years ago when we started designing the transaction processing core, uh, we borrowed some design elements from Bitcoin, especially something they called the unspent transaction outputs model. And basically, uh, this is a model in which spending is done by pointing to previous transactions. In Neo4j's terminology, creating edges or connections between nodes. And once we noticed that we were modeling transactions as a graph, we went out to look for a native graph database, and we found that Neo4j was a great fit for this use case. Yeah, so we describe our use case as graphs for real-time transaction processing. So the problem we're solving initially is clearing houses. The way they solve interbank transactions is by keeping a batch of all requests from one bank to another in a given time window, and then doing one processing batch uh, every four hours or something. But that has a few uh, drawbacks. One of them is you have to wait for four hours, in some cases, for the money to arrive at your friend's destination bank because you don't have accounts at the same institution. The second problem is that if it's not a business day, then you have to wait up to three days so that the money gets there. But we were just talking about information, right? And there's really, really no limitation on processing this type of information in real time. So uh, what we're doing is just trying to communicate this to different customers and selling the use case of modifying information in real time. In this case, is like financial information. And at the beginning, it takes a little bit of like uh, explanation and convincing, right? So that they go from thinking in batches to thinking in real time. But once they see it and like they check the stack and what do you mean graphs? What do you mean connections? How do you build the transaction chain, right? And once they understand that, they of course start thinking about, okay, can you do it faster? And that's uh, where we are pushing the boundaries and uh, even like doing stuff that I don't think we could do with uh, a random database out there. Well, we were not solving it before. Uh, the first implementation of the system used Neo4j right away, uh, but people uh, were using other relational like databases before, and they, of course, didn't have the advantages of what Neo4j calls uh, index-free adjacency. So uh, we're really happy to be using something that supports uh, walking graphs without having to join tables, because in our use case, it would be really slow to find the nodes describing the transactions. We started a long time ago when Aura was not in the market yet. And uh, so we actually chose the community edition of Neo4j because it was open source and free to use. And there was this licensing deal for startups with less than 50 people, which at the time was like very far away in the future for us. And uh, it was convenient for the licensing terms. And it was also convenient as a developer uh, being able to download this community edition and, and just run it locally and develop something that was just a concept at the time. And then Neo4j released the desktop application, which made it way more easy to just go and create multiple graphs and turn it off and on as needed. And finally, last year, when we heard about Aura, it was just right at the time we were just thinking about like production quality deployments. So it was like perfect timing for us because we actually got into the early access program and started testing this uh, graph in Belgium first. And we were really happy when we got the central US central region uh, enabled so that it's like way closer to our deployments in US East and West. Well, uh, it comes to my mind, uh, 
recently we did a migration and we were running the this data set on on Aura, but we needed to do some like schema changes. It's not really a schema because it's schema free in Neo4j, but we did have some changes in the way we were uh, storing connections and naming nodes and all that stuff. But the data set was running in production already. So we didn't have much time uh, to like turn the system off. Uh, we asked for some downtime, like three hours. And uh, the interesting thing was, was that we could download the data set process it locally using a buck procedures and then upload it back in the span of an hour, something like that. The, the second hour was like preparing all the, the scripts and stuff, but the actual process of downloading, transforming the data, which was uh, two point something gigabytes, I guess, uh, it took about an hour. So yeah, we were really happy to be able to do that and continue to use a more efficient query that we just uh, wrote this year. My favorite part, um, besides the Cypher language, which is very intuitive because all of this ASCII art uh, indicators of what a node and a connection is, um, I would say for the company, it was really useful to have APOC procedures because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to do this migration. Specifically, we were using this periodic iterate and periodic commit in large data sets that before that were just crashing uh, when we were trying to transform 1,500,000 nodes. Uh, but then we discovered this APOC procedure and we were able to do the migration in, I think it was nine minutes for, for this data set. So yeah, that was pretty useful. Well, uh, of course, we're always thinking about scale. And uh, first of all, we're looking forward to using a full graph in Aura that's going to take like 64 gigabytes of memory, I guess. <laughs> so we're still a long way to go. But what I really like about this uh, like cloud hosted graphs is that we can implement our vision of having multiple transaction processing clusters each uh, running on its own graph, possibly, and then like building bridges between them so that we can move money between the different graphs. We're not yet at that stage because, as I said, uh, we're only using one graph at the moment, but definitely we envision first scaling up to the limit of one single uh, cluster and then like spinning up different clusters to accommodate the demand. Uh, that's something that I'm personally really excited about. Uh, when I learned about Aura last year, um, one of the things that I was doing when I was living in China before all this stuff, and I, I was working on better ways to learn Chinese. So it turns out that pretty much like transactions draw a graph in the Bitcoin system, Chinese characters also draw a graph between them. So I see the future of graphs like everywhere. Maybe I'm a bit obsessed about it, but definitely I see uh, like not only a big market for you guys, but also for developers trying to find better ways to model problems. So it's not really about tables and rows. It's pretty much all about connections. Everything's connected out there. We just have to go and find the connections between stuff and then put it on a database. Hopefully near for day. <laughs>